like this computer, which is an older one, has a couple of second delay, so I'll just talk randomly for a minute or so. Anyhow, um, these are the Expert TA solutions. Um, chapter 26, the first one here. That's interesting. It's a better close up. Um, key thing with this is you've got two charges, they're 0.02 meters apart, and you're asked to find somewhere where the electric field um, would be zero. So this is similar to some of the conceptual questions. There's quite a bit of math in this one. So what I have to do is I have to think about the fact that um, the electric field strength is kq over r squared um, from a point source. So at some point, if this is positive for me and this is negative, that's not going to be zero anywhere in here, and it's not going to be zero anywhere in here. It's got to be zero somewhere over to the right side of point P. So that's the answer for part A for me. Now to actually do the mathematics behind it, what I've got to figure out is where this larger charge times this larger distance will create the same field as the smaller charge with it at this smaller distance. And so what I do is I set things up here mathematically. And this is the charge on the positive one. This is the charge on the negative one. I use D as the distance to the right of point P. Um, I did that before I kind of looked at this. So I'll have to go back and add two centimeters in later to whatever I get for my D distance um, to figure out how far it is to the right of this origin. So I noted that kind of here. Um, at any rate, when I do that, Factor out the k, cross multiply, <clears throat> take the square root of both sides to solve for d, which I do down here. So it's kind of this end around. I get that d is 0. Point, uh, oh, that's weird. I don't know why I have that. Yeah, I don't know why there's 0. 0. 0.0 point. That part should be off. So I'm going to wipe that out. We'll do a little block like that. No. Wait it out. Nope, that's too white. You'll know I've screwed up. That looks better. No block there. Do it something like this. And just moving that down there. Be nicer if that was actually a closer color, wouldn't it? Ooh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm so friggin' sneaky. Um, anyhow, so that's 0 0.0079 meters is this distance d to the right of this point, and so that's 0 0.0279 meters from the origin. So now it asked for it in centimeters because, of course, it did. So that's 2.79 centimeters. This one, problem two, also kind of mathy. We've got a fairly large positive charge here, or pardon me, a small positive charge here, a fairly large negative charge here, um, and you're asked things about the electric field at point P. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's asking about the components caused by charge Q1, I'm going to figure out the electric field caused by charge Q1 by using this general formula. That gets me about 300 newtons per coulomb. I had to use this distance, which is this hypotenuse, so I use Pythagorean theorem up here. I actually got the angle here as well, which I'm going to use to figure out these components. So once I get the total electric field strength at point P caused by Q1, to get the horizontal part, I take this, multiply it by the cosine of the angle. To get the vertical part, multiply it by the sine of the angle. So um, by convention, up and right is positive, so these are both positive field strengths. For this one, the electric field at this point caused by this negative charge since uh, is going to be pointing downward, so that's going to be a negative value. So once again, I use the general formula for electric field from a point source, put a negative in there, and I get this pointing down with around 3,560 newtons per coulomb. I put that in as a negative. To get the, uh, basically, the rest of these are all vector um, problems here. A lot of this is vector problems, honestly, other than this 
electric field calculation. So here, I basically, that's the amount I've got down, that's the amount I've got vertically up from Q1, subtract those, I get that net amount of field down. And so to find the magnitude of the total electric field, I use Pythagorean theorem. This was a little tricky, it's gotta be a negative angle from the positive x-axis. So that was a little sneaky. I think I gave you that information in the um, preview that I did for the expert TA. This three and five are really good problems for thinking about things here. Um, so in problem three, basically what you're asked for is to figure out some things with this oil drop. This is um, Millikan's famous oil drop experiment. I think you want a Nobel Prize from that. It may have been the first American to do so. Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out the fact that if this is balanced, um, if it was suspended against a gravitational force, that means the electric force up has to go the gravitational force down. So what we've got to do is we've got to figure out the gravitational force down. To know that, we need to know the mass. Well, density is mass over volume. Mass is density times volume. I know the, the density that's given to get the volume. I've got to use the fact that this is 0.75 micrometers in radius, so that's 7.5 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, and that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. It gives me a tiny volume, something to the negative 18th cubic meters, and when I multiply the density and the volume, I get this mass, and then times 9.8. I get the force downward. So that's the force downward. That's also got to be the electric force upward um, because an electron will be attracted upward to the positive plate. So if I know this is a uniform electric field, I can use the formula for uniform electric fields, force over charge. I know what the force is because it's got equal to the gravitational force. And you should know the charge on an electron. If you don't, look at where that is on your formula sheet. It's negative, obviously, but that's the magnitude of the charge. So that gives me about 100,000 newtons per coulomb as my electric field strength. <clears throat> For problem four, this gets to the idea that the electric field lines represent the strength of the electric field. So when I counted for me, I have 23 lines coming out of here, 12 lines out of here. This one's a positive charge. This one's a negative charge. I didn't use the colors they said, but you get the idea here. So this is going to be positive. Maybe I should make that green. A little darker green. I'm sure that's wrong. I should make that white. And over here, this is going to be a negative charge. So uh, I had plus 23, I had 23 lines coming out, 12 lines going in. Initially I got this wrong because I used 1.92 to 1, and the expert TA gave me a hint, um, basically, or feedback, which said, hey, it looks like you're off by a negative sign. So I didn't think about this in terms of being positive and negative. I guess if it's the ratio of their charges and not asking about the magnitude, that makes sense. If you look from very, very far away, these are close to each other there's net a more positive charge here than negative. So I would expect the net to be basically 11 lines pointing out if I looked at this from a very far distance. That corresponds with what I had here. Problem number five, uh, charge particle entering this. It's going to deflect to the left here. So I said C diagram. Here, if it's an electron that's deflected to the right, that also means that the field is positive on the right side, negative on the left side, and by definition, electric field lines point from positive to negative. Here, if it says that the um, particle is deflected to the left and the field is pointing from A to B, that means here, in this case, the positives are on the left side, negatives are on the right side. That means whatever this thing is that's deflecting to the left has to have a negative charge. Neutron is neutral, protons positive, sodium ions positive, so it's got to be chlorine ion. Six has got a lot of math in it. So, big idea, this is really a projectile problem. Um, it gives you a charge, it gives you a mass. This is not like most um, electricity problems because here the mass of the object, pardon me, and the gravitational force are significant compared to the electrical force. That's because it's a very weak field um, and a fairly massive object. Um, so, 
this is 4.5 meters apart. The field strain is 22 newtons per coulomb. It says this particle enters halfway up or midway through um, the plates. So that's got 2.25 meters from either side of the plates. It's moving 35 meters per second. So for part A here, it's um, with the field directed downward, if I've got a positive charge, that means that the electric force is down and the gravitational force is down. Down here in part C, they're saying the field's directed upward, so the electric force is up and the gravitational force is down. So I went through a four-step process. First, to find both the electric and gravitational forces, then to find the net force and acceleration, then to find the time to hit the plate, and then to find the horizontal distance. So the key thing really is this net force. So gravitational force is pretty easy. Electric force for uniform field, I'm rearranging the E equals F over Q field formula. So that gets me a force down, that also gets me a force down, that gets me a net force down. So then that divided by the mass of 1.4 kilograms, that gives me my acceleration downward. So now, to find the time to hit the plate, I'm gonna use a kinematics formula one half at squared equals, it really should be delta y, I suppose, <coughs> um, 2.25 meters. Why 2.25 and not 4.5? Because it starts halfway between the plates. So basically this thing is going to be shooting up here, or pardon me, shooting down, because both gravity and electric force are acting down. And it's going to hit 2.25 meters below where it starts. So when I do that, I get 0.285 seconds. And then to figure out how far it moves sideways, that's pretty easy. Basically, the sideways velocity, which is 35 meters per second, is horizontal distance divided by time. We know the time it's going to take to hit. So we can figure out it's almost 10 meters. Um, the speed, the key thing with that is to recognize it's asking for speed and not um, vertical or horizontal. So I'm assuming that it wants the resultant. The horizontal speed doesn't change because there's no horizontal forces. The vertical speed does change. It starts out at zero, ends up going down at 15.8 meters per second based on this kinematics equation. So I know the acceleration downward and I know the time that it's accelerating. So this is my net speed. Finally, for part C, it says it switches the field. So basically what I do for this is I know there's 63.8 acting <coughs> um, upward Gravity still acts downward, so that's now a net force upward of 50.8 newtons. Here's my new acceleration upward. Still got to go two and a quarter meters because it's halfway between these plates. Now it's just going upward to the top instead of downward to the bottom. So I get a little more time and I get a little more distance. For problem seven, again, also a really nice one. Um, Essentially, you've got this thing here. It's got a 102 Newton per Coulomb electric field. It's moving aside really fast. This distance has given us 3.2 centimeters. So it's asking about the deflection here. So basically, like how far is that moving? Has that moved upward when it gets to the end of this? So basically, what I've got to do is, again, I've got to figure out the acceleration, and I've got to figure out um, the time that it's taking to go through. Get the time to go through this. I know this distance, and I know the horizontal speed. So that's that rearrangement. I get 1.1 times 10 and 8, 8 seconds. To get the acceleration, I'm going to look at the electric force times the charge. That gives me a very high acceleration. I did that first. When I do that, I know I don't have to take gravity into account because this is 10 to the 13th meters per second squared. If I subtract off 9.8 from it, not going to make any sort of difference worth noting. So field strength, charge, and the mass of an electron is over here. So take a look at this derivation. Uh, you could have done that in a couple of steps. Uh, you could have figured this out and then put that up above here. So when I do that, I get that acceleration, that time, figure out the displacement vertically, that's actually a pretty decent vertical um, displacement in a, that tiny amount of time. So it's about a tenth of a centimeter, or 0 .00, oh, no, 0 0.00109 
meters, so 1.1 millimeters. Um, and then to find the vertical speed here, take the acceleration and multiply it by time, end up getting that. And then to find out the angle it exits, horizontal speed, vertical speed, inverse tangent of the vertical divided by horizontal. Going to question number eight, I asked you to answer this in video. So the reason I wanted you to do that is I don't think the AP would give you something that's this weird in terms of the numbers, but it, I think you can think about it So um, conceptually. So it says find the magnitude of the electric field at QA, that's here. So we're interested in this. I'm gonna make a color, I think a pink, no. Blue. So we're interested in the field at this particular point. So it says that QB, QC, QD is 4.1 nanocoulombs. Q is negative 1.1 nanocoulombs. So essentially what we've got here is we've got pos oops, pos positive at a bunch of different places. B, C, and D Nope, that's not B. And they're different distances. So this one would cause the field here to go upward. This would cause the field to go left. This would cause the field to go up and to the left. But these are at different distances um, because this distance on each side is 13.1 centimeters. So this and this I'd be able to calculate. This I would if I used Pythagorean theorem as well. And then this one's a negative charge in here. And make that black color. So, and that would cause it to go down. So because these are on the same line, they would basically counteract each other to an extent, but um, mathematically, this is a different distance, it's a different magnitude of charge. So overall, when I look at this, I'm betting that the net electric field would be going up and to the left. The only two directions I think it could really go because of the symmetry is up and to the left or down and to the right. But since this basically field is acting to the left, this field is acting upward, this field is acting up and to the left, this field is causing a field down and to the right. And even though it's um, closer, it also has less charge, I'm betting the net field is up and to the left. And I could do a big old vector problem to solve that. So that's really all I'm asking for um, in terms of how you explain that one.